In this video, we're going to talk about advances that have been made in recent years in the world of testicle implants and testicle enhancement. Hello, my name is Dr. Saif Gallagher. I am a plastic and reconstructive surgeon with a special interest in genital surgery and testicle implants are a big part of what I do. So I would say the first thing is traditionally testicle implants really didn't get much attention from the medical world. Testicle implants are kind of like an afterthought and I believe it's probably because we were more focused on what was going on with the orchiectomy or removing the testicle in the first place. We we're probably trying to save a life treat cancer, treat a bad injury. So really the whole testicle implant was a little bit of an afterthought. And in one study, it showed that only two thirds of patients who had a testicle removed were offered an implant and only a third of those actually took up this offer. And um, we do know from the studies that implants can make a big difference. And now, of course, we have in my practice more so the world of testicular enhancement, where we're using implants to improve things down below. And one of the reasons I'm seeing this growing, I believe, is thankfully the implants are much better in this day and age. And so Traditionally, initially, way back before the 90s, we had silicone implants because it's really important to get something that's soft and natural for the body. Unfortunately, in 1992, we had the scares with the breast implants, silicone implants, and they went off the market. The, the concern at the time was an association between connective tissue disease and silicone implants. It never really was made, that connection, and so breast implants, for example, came back on the market, but what we saw in the world of testicle implants was just the saline implants coming back on the market. Now, the problem with the saline implants is when you look at the studies, anywhere from 44 to 70% of men who've gotten them found them to be too firm. And so in order to get something natural that's tolerated well, we need something a lot softer. And so in my practice, we do use silicone implants. And thankfully in recent years, we have what's called the extra extra soft durometer, meaning that we have the softest silicone elastomer we can have and patients tend to tolerate them really well. They're very squidgy and kind of, kind of fun to squidge uh, at the same time. And so um, the other nice thing about these implants are is one of the initial concerns with silicone implants is what we call a silicone bleed or a situation where you have a silicone shell that's filled with a gel. If it ruptures, it can leak into the body and maybe cause some sort of problem. The nice thing about the implants that we offer in my practice is that they can't rupture so they're they're actually soft but they're solid and so they will these devices will stay together and can't rupture so again that takes a big load off the mind uh, when it comes to the long-term effects of these implants another thing that i think has really improved over the years is how we put these implants in so one of the problems traditionally in 20 to 40 percent of men when you look at the satisfaction studies they weren't happy with the position of the implant meaning usually that the implant was too high i believe that probably the reason for this is usually when the urologist was putting the implant in they went in through the inguinal incision so up in the groin area and try to push the implant down in my practice, we access the scrotum through what's called the median raphe. So if you look at the scrotum in the center, there's a natural line there. We'll put a small incision and we can keep it really small because with the soft implants, we can squeeze the implant through just a little incision. So typically my incisions tend to be two centimeters or less regardless of the size of the implant uh, we're putting in there. And so with these, um, when we go down low on the scrotum, well, we're parking our implant just where we want it. So we don't have to massage it, push it down there, anything like that. It's already where we want it to be. And in this way, we find that satisfaction rates tend to be higher anecdotally in my practice uh, when we put it down there in the first place to uh, begin with. The next thing that really is a game changer, I think, is size. It is super important that the patient is involved in the discussion with the exact size of the implant. The great thing about the company I use is they have five different sizes off the shelf to begin with, which is more than what we see with the saline implants. And 
The great thing is if the patient doesn't find the size they want there, which is typical when we're doing enhancement or a patient wants to go bigger, we can make custom implants. And so as long as the patient's anatomy can accommodate it, we can go quite a bit larger than what you would find in nature if that's what the patient wants to do. And in my practice, for example, the largest implant I put in is about 7.5 in the longest uh, diameter. Um, and it's great that patients have those options and can be really involved in the design of these custom implants. Another thing finally everybody's beginning to realize is, and we see it now emerging in the urology literature too, is you do not suture these implants in position. So the saline implants come with a little suture tab um, and the temptation would be to throw a stitch in and put it somewhere in the scrotum, but this is not a good idea. We never do this with breast implants, for example, because it anchors the implant in an unnatural position. It moves unnaturally, it dimples the skin, and it's just not what we want because obviously in nature, there's no attachment between the testicle itself and the scrotum, so we shouldn't create one. And like I said, thankfully, this has kind of been recognized now across the board that we don't use that suture tab and again, another advantage over the um, soft silicone implants I use is we don't have that tab there in the first place. Sometimes patients can feel it um, in the silicone implants and, or in the saline implants. And then the other thing is you have a fill port because with the saline implants, they're filled before you put them in. So that's another regular irregularity on the other pole of the implant, which uh, patients may be able to detect. Another reason I prefer the silicone implants is we don't have to fill that implant. And I'll explain this to you. In plastic surgery, our life is implants, right? We live and breathe implants, breast implants, facial implants, all sorts of implants. And over the years, we developed really nice protocols around making this as safe as possible. One of the worst things that can happen when you put an implant in is that that implant will get infected. If the implant gets infected, unlike other body parts, we can't just treat it with antibiotics. Instead, usually that implant has to be removed. So not very pleasant for the patient. If we look at the literature around testicle implants, that rate of infection seems to be around 3%. Again, I don't have the exact rate in my practice, but in a cisgender man, when we're not doing it in the transgender population, because that's a lot more complicated, I haven't touch wood had any infections requiring the removal of of an implant and so there's a bunch of different protocols we use to do this one for example is the one touch technique meaning that when that implant comes on the field it's not going to be opened until the very last minute until it's ready to go to its new home and I as the surgeon am the only one who's allowed to touch that implant with a clean set of gloves and so if we're in a situation now where the tech or the surgeon needs to fill the implant beforehand, well, that's a lot of messing around and chances to colonize maybe that implant with some bacteria. So again, another reason I love those silicone, silicone implants, we can uh, put them right in. So overall, we've seen an improvement, uh, like I've mentioned, in how we do these implants. And so a large percentage of my patients are doing testicular implants in are just doing it for enhancement. They may have normal side testicles in there, but just want to enhance the implant or the appearance of things down below. And now, thankfully, our devices, our implants are a lot safer for doing that. If this is something you're interested in, my practice is here in Miami, Florida. About 90% of my patients fly in. Usually for testicular enhancement, the surgery itself, it's less than an hour. It can be done just with sedation. And um, patients usually stick around here in Miami for about a week afterwards. It's approximately a week off work, depending on what you do. Obviously, it can be a little bit longer if you do something strenuous. We do dissolvable stitches down there. Just keep that small scar in the middle of the scrotum. It's one of my favorite procedures to do because folks tend to be super satisfied uh, with it, mainly because of all the advances I've just mentioned. If this is something you're interested in, like I said, reach out to us. We'd be happy to hear from you.